Hey everyone, welcome to your local flavors. This week we're gonna visit two of the Valley's favorite locally owned and operated restaurants, and you're in for a treat. Our first stop is a Palenque Grill in McAllen, Texas. Just one of the restaurants under the Palenque Group, Valleywide. For our cooking segment, we're gonna feature a local chef that'll teach us how to make a delicious meal right in the comfort of your own home. We'll round it all off by taking a step back in time and visiting the Centennial and giving us that feel of the 1920s. So grab your fork, hold on to your napkin, and get your taste buds ready, cause your local flavors is next. Hey everyone, welcome back to your local flavors. We are here at Palenque Grill on Nolana in McAllen, Texas. Whether you've been to Taco Palenque, Pollo Palenque, or Palenque Grill, we're gonna find out their story, their origin, how they got started, and what inspired their menu. So let's go inside and take a look at Palenque Grill. Francisco Ochoa first began serving people delicious meals in 1975 when he opened El Pollo Loco in Mexico. A few years later, he was the first to bring a Mexican franchise to the United States. After selling Pollo Loco, he started up what would become the Palenque Group. His first Taco Palenque, a fast casual dining restaurant, opened in Laredo in 1987. Now, the Palenque Grill, their full service restaurant, is busy with happy patrons. We like the food, the service. Juan is a great server. Um, like I said, the food is awesome. The ambiance is great. I gotta say, I'm a total foodie. I love everything, but uh, <laughs> my favorite dish here is their tacos carretoneros. And uh, it's just got the soft tortilla with the fajitas. Fajitas are delicious. Um, you've got your sauteed onions with a little bit of cilantro, maybe some queso fresco that you can throw on there. And then there's salsitas. Uh, my wife, Garrita Tacos. And I'm steady, steady Freddy with it. Chicken tacos. The chicken tacos. Yeah. What, what brings you back? Why, why do you guys, I, I mean, obviously the food, but what else do you guys like? Customer service. We love the hostesses. Uh, Blanca, she does a great job. The Choa family, I mean, the fabulous family, fabulous people. I mean, the service is outstanding. The food is mm, excellent. Well, Acapulco Camarones is my favorite. That's what I use. That's what I really like that because it really reminds me of Acapulco. Okay. And especially, I just can see in my own mind the, the waves. Hitting, hitting the rocks in Acapulco, okay? Horacio Alvarado has worked for the Ochoa family for years and tells us more about the founder, fondly known as Don Pancho. During the time of his uh, traveling with the franchises, he also traveled quite a bit in the uh, Mexico area and along with his wife, they came up with plates that were very, very popular in the area, which is the northern Pacific part of uh, Mexico, right. uh, Sinaloa area, uh, Baja California area. But the heart of Don Pancho and his wife, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, was to bring in all the different flavors and, and recipes from Mexico and bring them into the States. Over 40 years have passed, and now you can find taco palenques, palenque grills, and pollo palenques up and down the Mexican-U.S. border. But Horacio says that although Don Pancho had the vision, it is his wife, Fredida, who has helped create such fabulous dishes. All the family's involved, but she is really the one with, with, the, with the flavor right, to the plates and her ingredients, and, and she's been able to, to, to infuse uh, and, and, and tweak and fine tune our recipes. So she'll come in here and she'll <laughs> test our plates and make sure we're on cue with her recipes. And come to find out, one of the customer favorites is also Don Pancho's favorite as well. Okay guys, so I'm in the kitchen, obviously, with Noe Lozano. Noe, tell us yeah, one man. of the specialty dishes that you guys make here in the kitchen for you. Absolutely, man. One of our favorites and most popular plates here is the Garritas de Leon. Garritas de Leon. It's prime ribeye and it slides very, very thin, okay, and marinated into our secret marinade, okay? Okay. I can't tell you that. You can't tell us the secret, okay. Yeah, secret, secret but sauce. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna put them on the grill. Okay. okay? And we're gonna cook them to perfection. And of so course, the secret. seasoning that goes into the fajita. That is secret. Into the meat. That one is secret. I can't tell you that one, but it is very, very good. 
but there is plenty of customer favorites to choose from. This is one of our famous uh, plates here on uh, Palenque Grill. It's the Callejeras Enchiladas. What it is, basically it's a tortilla marinated in a special sauce filled with queso fresco along with some of the papitas uh, from the house. Our Camarones Agua Chile is a very unique and this is one of the house appetizers. Then there is their fresh homemade ceviche. Our next plate here is our ceviche. It's a combination of fish and shrimp marinated into the tomato juice and lime juice. It's delicious and it's also one of our favorite appetizers here at Palenque Grill. And if you want to skip the iced tea and enjoy a cocktail with your meal, we have a recommendation. The Cucumber Jalapeno Martini. Um, I asked the bartender one day, what, is, what does he recommend? So he highly recommended this drink. So ever since then, it's, it's been my favorite. Now, it was my turn to try out their number one dish on the menu. Okay, folks, I got to dig into the Garritos de Leon from Palenque Grill. Remember, this was a featured item that he showed us, but I'm going to add a little bit of lime because I can't have my tacos without lime. And we're going to try this baby out. Here we go. Wow. The meat is so tender. The tortillas taste as fresh as they can be. Guys, you gotta try this dish. Palenque Grill, gotta try it out. Okay, everyone, we had a chance to sit down with Horacio and talk about the history and the origin of Taco Palenque and the Palenque Group. Noe took us in the kitchen to highlight some of the featured plates here at the restaurant. So if you're looking for authentic, fresh Mexican food, fresh tortillas, fresh pollo, this is the place to come. All of the Palenque Groups, valley-wide. This is your local flavors. Hi everyone, welcome back to the cooking segment of Your Local Flavors. I am here with Chef Marcel from McAllen Culinary Academy, and he's gonna show us how to make a great dish today, something that they can make in their home, something quick, easy, and what did you say? Delicious? Delicious. Delicious, Delicious. all right. Okay, Chef Marcel, what are we gonna make today? We're making tostadas mexicanas. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, they're delicious. If you think about changing the channel because it's just tostadas, you better turn on your DVR because this is gonna be great. You gotta stick around, he said it, you gotta stick around. Okay, tell us what we're gonna use and, and uh, how we're gonna prepare this. Okay, we're gonna make beef tostadas and there's of course also a healthier option for it and uh, then you would use vegetables, which okay. I'll describe a little bit later. But we're gonna make beef tostadas. So we have uh, ground chuck and you can just get it at your local grocery store or meat market and we're gonna season that with uh, cumin seeds, whole cumin seeds, some garlic powder, chipotle pepper and paprika. And we're going to season it while it's cooking in the pan. We'll also have some uh, refried black beans that we're going to use. Right. Uh, all we have to do is warm them up and uh, we put those on the tostadas. We're using uh, the, the, the larger tostadas today. Um, then we cover it with the meat and then we're going to put all the other ingredients. And we're going to start with, uh, with jalapenos. If you want to make it a little spicy, you can also use uh, fresh serranos, of course. I like but we use the, the jalapenos and then we put our tomatoes, our green onions, and then we put our melting cheese, which is a Oaxaca cheese. Um, and that goes then into the oven. And when it comes out of the oven, in the meantime, we're cutting the uh, cilantro and then uh, our queso fresco, which is a crumbly cheese that goes on top and some fresh avocado. Okay. The Oaxaca cheese is from Oaxaca, obviously. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a melting cheese. So that goes on the tostada as we put it into the oven. So it melts all over, gets all nice and bubbly and yummy. Um, and then this right here is a crumbly cheese, and I can show it to you just by cutting it open. Sure. So it's a queso fresco, so a fresh cheese. This is the curd of the cheese that's barely holding together. And see, when you, when you pull it apart, it just crumbles. Right. Those are all the little curds. So that's what we're going to do at the end. It adds a nice little salty touch to it. All right, are we ready to get started? I'm ready to get cooking. All right, let's yeah. cook it. Okay, chef, are we ready to saute this meat? Here we are, yes. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get started. Pan on the stove. Okay. A little oil in the pan. Okay. And then we take our ground chuck and carefully place it in the pan. There we go. And we just break it up and uh, get it to brown. Okay. Of course, while that is happening, we, uh, we can start with the seasoning. The first thing we do is uh, add a little bit of salt. Okay. So the salt goes on the meat. Whenever you uh, put salt on something, always do it from up high. You don't want to go too low because then you're seasoning in one spot. Just one spot with it, okay. And we add some fresh ground pepper. I like the way he's just so assertive. When he does it, he, like, you really get into it. I love oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> true chef. I love doing it. Then we have our uh, cumin seeds. And cumin seeds have to be cooked to give off flavor. Okay. So it might be a little interesting thing to know. They need to reach 400 degrees, and then the essential oils come out, and then it starts to taste like cumin better. And then we have some uh, granulated garlic powder. Okay. 
can never go wrong with garlic, right? Garlic yeah, is like garlic almost like a... Good. Garlic is a nice flavor. Okay. And then we have uh, our red pepper, Ooh. which is also known as paprika. Right, paprika. Some people think that you use it only for color, but it actually adds a little pretty flavor. Okay. And then we have chipotle pepper, which Ooh. is uh, a smoked jalapeno that is dried and then ground up. Wow, that looks really good. All right. And then we uh, continue to saute. And then you want to make sure that your meat is cooked completely. It is ground beef, so it has to reach at least 155 degrees, okay. which means well done. This is 80-20. 80-20, okay. Perfect. And it's ground chuck. And I, I like to use chuck because it's a muscle that is being used by the animal. Sure. And all muscles that are being used, a lot of blood flows through it. Okay. So it has more flavor there. Ooh, okay. Okay, so w I think this thing looks like it's almost pretty much done. That's, it is. It is done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we just let it cool this down a little bit so we can actually handle it a little easier. In the meantime, we're going to work on the tostadas themselves. We need to make them nice and small. We're going to mince them. So first, of course, you need to wash them. Even though they look really clean, you still want to get rid of uh, any sand that might be in there. So sure. you cut them off. We cut off the little rooty bit. Um, a lot of people, you'll be surprised, actually start cutting on the green side and then stop here and throw that away. But this is actually the best edible part. Really? Yeah, the green part is more used for decoration and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it is edible, there's nothing wrong with it, but it is a little bit bitter and the most flavor you get from the white part. Fine. So, Great tip, guys. Okay. Yeah, so what we do is uh, we lay them down and cut them in half this way. Okay. And then we go against the grain. So just slide your knife right through there so they get really small. So that's how we take care of the scallions. Okay. And then the tomatoes, we want to take the core out. There's nothing wrong with the core. It's delicious and, and uh, nutritious. Sure. But because we're making tostadas, we don't want our tostadas to get soggy. So we don't want all that water. So okay. we're just going to use the outside. So just cut them in half and then we're going to take the outside. Now, if, if you want to scoop that out, you can see my knife is way too big to get the tiny little thing out. So sure. what you do is you basically use the tomato against itself. Right. So instead of us going real dangerous with the knife like this towards your fingers, mm -hmm. you set the tomato up straight, you go in between the seeds and the flesh, and then you cut while rolling the tomato backwards. See, so my knife stays horizontal to sure. the whole thing, and then you cut it off. And then we have we have a little dice, so that's what we do with all the tomatoes. Right. And then we're gonna start building our tostadas. So are you ready to start doing I, that? No, I'm, no. Trust me, I'm ready to start building this thing. I want to change. I want to taste this. Okay, chef, you've got everything laid out, man. Everything looks beautiful. Are we ready to build this? We're ready to build. Tostada? Yes, we are. All right, so let's we're gonna do this. take our crispy tortilla. Okay. So we have our black refried beans. Okay. Do a nice little layer, a layer of that. It has a little bit of butter in there, and we do that so it uh, doesn't start to be absorbed by the tostada. So chef, is there a way that we build this a certain sequence that you go in, a certain order? There, there is. Um, you okay. want to make sure that your layers are flavor built, but also you're going to put it in a 400 degree oven. So you want to make sure that certain items do not get too toasty. Oh, okay. So we're going to do the meat first. Okay. And might as well do it while, uh, while we're talking, while we're talking about, it. about it. Okay, so, so the meat goes on first. Nice and quick. So the meat goes in the bottom. Then and, a, gonna, and a nice healthy And a nice portion. healthy, healthy. Yeah, healthy this, portion, uh, okay. Yeah, two of these tostadas is a meal. So then we add our jalapenos. So they, they touch the meat as they're cooking, they will uh, you know, distribute their flavor to right. the meat as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do those finely uh, diced or minced scallions. This mix. And we put those underneath all the rest that's to follow. Because this is something that, if that goes in a 400 degree oven, these tiny little things, they're going to cook way faster than all the big items that are on there. Okay. So we want to protect them from the oven's heat. So then we have our diced tomatoes, they go on top as well. Right. So then we ha add a little bit more cumin seeds right on top. Okay. So they will be exposed to the oven, which intensifies their flavor. And then finally, the melting cheese, the Oaxaca cheese. A little fresh pepper on top, and now they're ready for the oven. Right. Five minutes, all right? Okay, chef, we've got the tostadas in the oven. Yes. We're ready to do some chopping here. That's right. Okay, and we waited a little bit, and there's a reason for this. Yes, okay, we wait explain. until tostadas are in the oven to do our final items. Number one, we do not want the avocado to get brown. Okay. So that's that one is the oxidation of that. We don't want the cheese to dry out, okay. and we do not want the cilantro to wilt. Now, whenever you do herbs, especially cilantro, but most other herbs, mm -hmm. you want to wash them ahead of time and then cut their little feet, just like you do with flowers. Right. And then you stick them in water, so they actually will soak up. They will fill up more and they become really nice and, and crisp. Right. But also they get a chance to dry. And when cilantro and basil, those kind of herbs, when they dry, they are a lot easier to cut. I'm sure that everybody 
wash them off really quick before right. you were in a hurry and then try to cut them you got all the slimy stuff in your cutting board right. you don't have that when it's all dry so that's a tip it sticks to your knife and everything exactly right. it doesn't do it at all okay. when it's like this lay that down so it stays nice and dry and then we'll just cut it you see how nice it, it cuts right not a lot of sticking you hear that the tostadas are ready the tostadas all right. are ready to Time go to eat. all right chef We've got them out of the oven. We're ready to. Are we ready to eat? No, we're oh, not yeah, ready yeah, to eat. Yeah, yeah, we're ready to eat, but we also want to put the toppings on. Okay, let's we put the, the toppings, toppings on. So we have the fresh avocado. <laughs> <laughs> then we have our queso fresco. Oh, God, that looks really good. There we go. And then, of course, our fresh cilantro on top. Okay, guys, a Mexican tostada made from a Dutch chef. It can't get any better than this. All right, let's try so. this. Let's, let's try this. this. Enjoy. Bite. Oh, oh yeah. and be clean about it. There we go. That's what we like to see. Hmm. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay, the red, I mean the green onions or the scallions jump out, and the jalapenos, of course. Wow, that is just, guys, it's full of flavor. You have to try this recipe. This is delicious. Right. Right. Wow. I'm gonna have to have another bite just to make sure that I would just eat the whole thing. The avocados. Well, I you mean, do that, I'm gonna start making the rest. There, of you know, he's gonna prepare <laughs> the other ones. This is the way to go. Chef Marcel, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your kitchen, for showing us this great recipe, guys. Mexican tostadas from a Dutchman, but they were excellent. So you got to try them out, Chef. Thank you so much. Definitely got to visit Chef Marcel at McAllen Culinary Academy. All right. Please thank do. you yeah. so much. This is your local flavors. Salute. Ah, cheers. We're in historic downtown McAllen, and we're going to feature a restaurant that's got a speakeasy style to it and a golden era 1920s feel. So let's go inside and check it out. It really is like stepping back in time when you enter the Centennial. With amazing artwork on the walls and a very 1920s vibe, you know you are in a very unique place. So with some wine and the biggest cheese tray I've ever seen, Isaac Guerra, the owner of the Centennial, gave us a history lesson on this old place. Tell me a little bit about how the Centennial came to be. How did it, this whole thing get started? Well, you know, a lot comes in, in the building and, and the history. Right. You, you, can't, you can't replace old bones. And uh, the building's been here over 100 years, and uh, the, the history that it plays in a, in a part of McAllen is incredible. And he also showed us some of the history he found as he was remodeling. Some of the things we found was bottles of opium and things in the middle of the wall. I did find the Brownsville Herald, you know, 1936 on there. I think Will Rogers, it says Will Rogers was going to be appearing in town that week. Uh, really? A pack of Lucky Strikes, you know, can't go anywhere without those. There you go. So. In fact, this building was a segregated cafe until the early 1950s. And when I mean segregated, pretty much if you were brown, you didn't come here and it was called the White Kitchen Cafe. And no pun intended on the play of words, but uh, that's a, you know, a, a history. The White Kitchens were kind of like Piggly Wiggly supermarkets, kind of dabbled uh, throughout Texas and lower New Orleans, and there were several kitchens. 83 was pretty much a major thoroughfare from here to, to Brownsville, your, okay. your sweet town. Right. Uh, you know, if you're a trucker or traveling late night, this is the only place to get a meal up to 3 a.m. from Rio Grande City all the way to Brownsville. Okay. So it was a major hub. Isaac opened his restaurant almost 100 years later and appropriately named it The Centennial. I wanted to do a, a fusion of different style foods. Uh, I wanted to do something that reminded me of a home, things that I would have in my grandmother, things that I'd have in the streets, things that I'd have in, in street fairs such as markets, and we came up with this crazy cuisine called South Texas Border Soul Food. Isaac wanted the Centennial menu to reflect foods you would find in towns along the Gulf and in Mexico, but with a French and European flair. But for Isaac, the food is not the only art you will experience in this place. We've always been around music, you know, our, our whole lives, and uh, uh, all my friends were musicians, uh, you know, uh, I paint professionally and it, I was just always around artists so it was hard to do one art form meaning with the food without having your second form of art form that and you realize they had a, a great marriage together. As a well-known artist himself you will find various pieces of his art on the walls of the Centennial. I was always taught by my parents to you know do what you enjoy doing but I, I didn't think you can make a living you know doing what I enjoy doing and I've been one of the few fortunate people in life that I've made a living a great one right and it's his artistic adventurous soul that keeps this restaurant alive with a thriving nightlife you, you really run things on not having rules you know if I want to change this up one night and we do art shows and I have card readers and 
bring in a Latin flair and work with a consulate. I mean, we can do that. Right. You know, you're not a you're not a franchise. You're not something where your your hands are tied behind your back. And we do that a lot. You know, we play make believe and let, let's have fun. So after a bit more wine and cheese, it was time to head to the main dining room. You've done such a great job. Beautiful with your menu. Let's go upstairs and let's take a bite of some of the stuff you've created. Absolutely. Stop the you around. Absolutely. It's my job. Come let's on go. up. Seated in an upholstered booth surrounded by 1920s art deco, Isaac brings out some of the restaurant's most popular dishes. The first dish, their oxtail jam, spread over warm brie cheese on a piece of French bread, is new to the menu, but so popular that the kitchen crew has to keep a batch cooking 24 hours a day. We stew that down with port wine, a little bit of carrots, different secret herbs and spices, of course they always say that, right? right. We stew that down for three days. Nice, simple, but really elegant. When you try this bend, it's really gonna take you back to, you know, your grandparents, but then it'll take you into the streets of France like that. So. Right, right, right. Man, and he was right. It was just incredible. Then it was time to try some tacos, but not your typical kind of taco. I'm obsessed with tacos. We have a, a saying here called embrace the taco. Okay. Which we love our roots. We love being from South Texas. We, we love we love that tacos are a way of life. Sure. At the same time, we want to do them differently in that these are pecan encrusted Gulf oyster tacos. They're done raw Gulf oysters. They're lightly uh, done with shaved pecans, a little bit of cayenne pepper. That Then I love eating sushi, so that's done with an eel sauce Ooh. with a little bit of uh, port wine and the tortillas are infused with chipotle pepper, shaved cabbage, and a little bit of lime juice. And on the lighter side, we tried some mojitos. This actually looks like a tortilla. It's actually thinly sliced jicama with a little bit of mango pico in a Thai dressing. You hold it like that, kind of squeeze this over on top, go ahead and pull the tail, and you're all set to have a healthy taco. Both were, of course, amazing and full of surprising flavors. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never really been that much of an oyster fan, but guys, you need to try this. This is amazing. This is an event. This is really good. Okay, I'm gonna move on here, guys. All right. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this one with you. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're, gonna, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna hold it firmly like okay. that. You're gonna twist it tail off. Okay. Squeeze a little bit of the lime with a little chili sauce on it. Oh, this would be hard. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 there you go. Mm. You know it's a good restaurant and the owner doesn't get tired of eating it so Oh absolutely. <laughs> okay, love eating here. I am a Hickama fan. Hickama fan. And this is really good. And if you think their food menu sounds fascinating, their drink menus are just as incredible. Drink menus are broken down into categories and designed by up and coming artists. The world is is a wonderful place to do research. Right. Oh, absolutely. And you know, this primarily being a, a a 1920s speakeasy and that was our whole theme and that's what kind of this place was especially the upstairs area where we're at now this is where you could get a drink and during prohibition and this is where you could throw some cards and some dice and you know it was definitely uh there's many rumors of what this room that we're actually in was in, in 1920s this amazing drink was called holy smoke here's your blessing ben thank you and there's our smoke infused cocktail go ahead and this is, an, this is an old fashioned. This is our old fashioned. It's actually made with cognac, a little bit of rum, and some rye bourbon. Ooh, sounds good already. Has chocolate bitters and orange bitters in it. So Cheers. Let me know what you think of that. It was so good that I was forced to share. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to check for myself. Here. Check that out. Gee, I'm, that's it's been a long time. Did you just steal, did you just steal that from me? I did not. Oh man, that's, that's just wonderful. A, and you can and you can taste that smoking. Right. So what happens? is the smoke attaches to the ice and it stays smoky throughout your whole dream. Then it was time to try another customer favorite, the Bearcat, named after a 1920 slang for a lively, feisty woman. This is amazing. This is actually uh, reduced balsamic vinegar. Okay. So we think, wow, to put vinegar in a, in a drink with that reduced balsamic with a little macerated blood red oranges, macerated strawberries, slices of serrano pepper, and some tequila with uh, our little favorite chili salt on the rim. The bear cat. The bear cat. <laughs> gotta have these, folks. You gotta have both of these. These are excellent. So when you feel like stepping back in time and listening to some inspiring music, having a great dinner, or even some unique cocktails, you gotta make it out to the Centennial Club in McAllen, Texas. This is Your Local Flavors. 
Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Your Local Flavors, where we feature two of your locally owned and operated restaurants here in the Rio Grande Valley. Make sure you find the chef's recipe online at yourlocalflavors.com. We'd love to get your feedback and restaurant suggestions, so make sure you hit us up on all our media platforms and let us know what you think. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday morning at 10.30 for Your Local Flavors.